there's a storm brewing and an ominous figure is on the horizon. But don't let that frighten you. It's update 3.1 for Total War Warhammer 3. We've got quite a lot of things to cover. There's new regiments of renown making their way to the battlefield, reworks to certain faction mechanics for both the more ghastly armies and the more honorable. There's also a brand new endgame, this time putting you at the mercy, or lack thereof, of the Chaos Dwarfs. And we've got some bug fixes too. Oh, and Harold Hammerstorm has entered the fray. So if you're undead, you better beware. Let's get into it, shall we? So considering he's right there, let's start with the big lad himself. Harold Hammerstorm, or Harry the Hammer to his friends and the Warriors of Chaos, is on his way as a free legendary hero for Total War Warhammer 3. Unlocking the original Warhammer is a simple enough endeavor. First, you'll need to redeem him through your CA account, and then after that, you'll have to complete his quest, The Hammerstorm Cometh, which unlocks when your legendary lord hits level 15. Once you've fulfilled that, you'll have a truly brutal melee specialist in your army, one that strikes fear into even the deadest of hearts, a brutal killing machine, and one who's a specialist in the complete and utter destruction of the undead, Harry the Hammer is a worthy addition into your army, and he's available now to redeem for free. Harry's not the only new warrior making their way to the battlefield, however. Update 3.1 has also brought in new regiments of renown, this time giving some love to infantry across a number of factions. Starting with Cathay, the bandits of the Silver Road are ready to be hired by the dragons. Armed with a buckler shield and flaming missiles, making them a perfect support for fire rain rocket batteries. In Kislev, the Tsarina's secret police, the Watchmen in the Night, are joining the front line. Sacrificing ranged attacks for a second melee weapon, they're a solid anti-infantry force. Their rabble rouse ability keeps their comrades immune to fear and terror. After all, who knows what they've seen in the Oblasts. The Ogre Kingdoms get themselves the Boglars of the Mad Marshes. These supposed Toad Noblars can regenerate entities in water and come with poison as standard. In the Chaos Realms, the Monogod factions also gain new regiments. Starting with Nurgle and the Frolicker's Bubonic, these Nurglings have adopted blisters that cause pain to those who strike at them in melee. Slanesh have recruited the Princes of Perfection, the staunchest spears they have access to. With perfect vigor and soporific musk, these spears will strike hard and strike true. The chromatic abominations of Zinch are blue horrors for whom defense is the best offense. They've got a powerful barrier replenishment ability that triggers whenever a spell is cast by either side in combat. And lastly, Korn has brought forth the Hounds of the Blood Hunt. These flesh hounds have access to the dampen contact effect, which allows them to temporarily remove magical attacks, making them flankers with a very spicy addition. They are also very good boys that I would sadly advise against petting. Now that we've given those boys a bit of love, let's check out some gameplay fixes. Starting off with Vampire Counts and their The Dead Rise Again ability, and, well, frankly, they've been rising a bit too much, so we've played with the numbers a bit in the name of balance. The base chance for all units returning has been reduced from 20% down to 10%. The chance for all units which is proportional to their recruitment cost has been halved, and Lords and Heroes chances of coming back have been reduced to 5%. This should make fighting the vampire counts a bit less monotonous, and also give Heinrich in the Empire less nightmares when he kills his mate Alberish over and over because Kemmler keeps bringing him back. Bretonia have also received an update, bringing them up to speed in combat with the factions of Total War Warhammer 3. Starting off with how units work, they are now separated into the unit types Knight and Peasant. Knights no longer take leadership penalties in combat if units with the Peasant attribute begin to rout. With this change, Peasants are also no longer considered as expendable. Knights Errant also gain the Impetuous ability. This allows themselves and any allied unit within 35 meters to become immune to psychology for 30 seconds whilst charging. As for Peasants, they gain access to the passive ability, the Peasant's Duty. All Peasant units gain plus 8 to their leadership if a unit with a Knight attribute is within 55 meters as they are inspired by their glorious legions. It doesn't just stop with the units, however. The Blessing of a Lady's stat bonuses have changed, 
now granting a 15% ward save as opposed to 25% physical resistance, meaning they can stand toe to toe with units with magical attacks and weapons. King Luen Leonkir also now deals magical attacks, as is befitting of a Grail Knight of his stature. As well as this, damsels also gain access to the Troves feature on the campaign map. There are plenty more changes for Bretonia, so please do check out the blog for all the details. Now then, let's get a bit more general. Starting off with the menu screens. When loading a game, we now only load the first 25 games, saving you time so you can get back into your conquest quicker. We've also added a button so you can load the rest of your games, in case you really need to go far back and a button that allows you to delete currently loaded saves via the campaign. We've also made some AI changes to artillery and units during walled settlement battles. Artillery will now take extra care when assaulting walls. For example, they won't try to create breaches if there's no need for one, and if there's already units in the gate, they'll target elsewhere. Units during sieges won't remain idle if they're taking fire from fort towers, and will opt out of guarding units if they remain idle for too long. AI units in settlement battles will also now focus on capturing capture points that are unowned where their forces are attacking nearby. We've also fixed the issue of AI melee units switching targets whilst already in melee, causing them to just stand there. That won't happen now. A problem with event notifications has also been fixed, meaning that you will see all events that should pop up when they're sent to you if they're all sent at once. We've also made changes to multiple tooltips with inconsistencies, with help from a lot of you in the community, so big thank yous to you for that. I personally can think of no better way to thank you than, well, giving you a brand new endgame. So let's check that out. The Dawizar are on the rise, and in the new endgame scenario, the will of Hushut, they're going to let you know it. Their drills will pierce across the lands, with Chaos Dwarf forces spilling out from them, casting their aggression across the lands. For those who dare stand against Hushut's Chosen, they'll have to take the war to the Chaos Dwarves at the very center of their civilization and take Tsar Nagrund from them. You'll have to take to the tunnels and reach and take their home to stem the tide of gunpowder, iron, and a Kadai, and stop their plans short. So that's just a quick glimpse at the big hitters coming in update 3.1 for Total War Warhammer 3. From Harry the Hammer joining the fight, to facing an apocalyptic tide of Chaos Dwarfs, there's a lot to be getting on with. In case you missed it, we've also showcased the roadmap for future content, shaping the future of the battlefield for both Immortal Empires and the Realm of Chaos. As always, we'd love to hear from you. So please let us know what you think about the changes in the comments and on the suitable channels. For more details on update 3.1, don't forget to check out the blog.